our um, next discussion, which is on the uh, state of education and skills. And I have the pleasure of uh, inviting uh, Ms. Bhargavi Dave, uh, who is Managing Director, Gujarat Livelihood Promotion Company Limited. She has vast experience in the regulatory and development sector and work uh, very, very deeply in the development of uh, communities and have focused on enhancing capacities to promote livelihoods in the state. She's also a special director of the State Institute of Rural Development. We are joined by Mr. S. Satyanarayana, Managing Director, Andhra Pradesh State Skill Development Corporation. He has served the state in various positions, right from the district collector and district magistrate in Kurnool and Anandpur districts, and joint collector in East Godavari. He was Managing Director, AP Scheduled Castes Cooperative Finance Corporation, before moving on to Central Deputation as Director of Census Operations and Director, Citizens Registration. Uh, in place of Dr. Abhay Wak, who has not been able to join us, uh, we have Mr. Umesh Kokate uh, from the Directorate of uh, Technical Education, Maharashtra. Uh, do we have Mr. Nagarajan with us? Uh, he's Commissioner, Higher Education, Government of uh, Gujarat. Scotch team, is he there with us? Do we have Mr. Nagarajan? Scotch team, can you confirm? Anyways, so let's move ahead uh, with uh, our discussion. So we, uh, uh, you know, instead of uh, talking about the projects that we have done, uh, let's center the discussion on a couple of issues, uh, the questions that I'm going to be putting in front of the panel. So uh, uh, to begin with, you know, I must say that India is now, when we have turned 75, uh, we still continue to face the challenges uh, related to the system, although there's a great amount of uh, road that we have traveled and milestones that we have achieved. Uh, but both in terms of students, teachers, skills, overall, there are gaps which need to be uh, filled in. Uh, we have achieved a lot in numerical numbers, uh, but uh, in terms of content, we still need to uh, travel a few more miles. So let's consider a few facts. You know, the India has done very, very well in terms of the market uh, of education, which is expected to touch, you know, uh, dollar uh, 225 billion by 2025. That's a large number. India's edtech startups have received nearly $4 billion in 2022 alone. In last two years, FDI inflows stood at $7.7 .7 billion. And India has also become the second largest market for e-learning after the United States. While we are moving towards creating a knowledge-based economy, which is innovation-led and technology-driven, our higher education institutions do play and is expected to play even further higher role, a key role in making India a leading global innovation and digital economy. The story on the skill side also is promising, but there are gaps that we need to uh, fill in. So my first question uh, goes to uh, uh, the uh, uh, technical education uh, department from government of Maharashtra when it comes to uh, uh, the skill part that, you know, is mobilization and motivation a challenge as people do not really come forward and rolling into vocational and technical education? Do we have Mr. Umesh with us? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's really an appropriate and very, uh, I mean, appropriate question that you are asked regarding the skill development uh, in Maharashtra state as well as in the country. Uh, since I'm working and basically a professor and also working in this area and having a lot of interaction with so many students, right away from uh, polytechnics to vocational students and all engineering students. What I observed, <clears throat> what you said is very correct. The basic inclination from the student point of view or the parents point of view, if you think from that way, the basic objective is to get themselves settled in terms of getting bread and butter for their daily uh, this one, uh, outcome. Now, in order to make that particular outcome uh, uh, like uh, bread and butter assured, then they are ready to go for their own ideas, skills, going for entrepreneurship, going for startups and everything and all. What is important is whatever the scheme that as a government we launch, like we have a separate skill and innovation society, a separate ministry for that, a lot of courses being flooded and now the government of Maharashtra had signed up an MOU with Infosys, 
MOV with NASCOM to offer so many e-learning courses to the students. Uh, actually, uh, I myself working as a coordinator for state level, I, I can tell you the figures like around some 20 lakh students we have registered onto the portal of Infosys at the same time onto the portal of our uh, NASCOM. That is, they have future prime scale and they have uh, Infosys has a springboard platform. Now, out of this registration, when we say that how many students are actually participating in education for the skill development, uh, the, I can say it's only 5 to 6% irrespective of constantly putting in front of them the opportunities that they do have after completing this uh, education, after completing this kind of skill set. Uh, as a government of Maharashtra, we are trying to uh, set up so many labs at remote places also our ideas are now fully cubed we have a lot of collaboration with industry we try to tune up our curriculum with national occupational standards and uh, imbibing the skills that is required as per the recommendation given by the industry we do have a couple of projects which are very successful i can quote here like uh, the institute where i used to work uh, the company like Mercedes Benz, they have come up with an idea that they will teach our student and start up a collaborative program, a certificate program for, for one year, wherein the student will be able to understand this high tech vehicle. And uh, believe me, for the last 12 years, uh, this institute is successfully implementing this particular school uh, to offer one year certificate course that is totally skill course. Second model was like something called. Yama Training School, a two-wheeler uh, uh, automobile. Uh, they have come up with uh, uh, Yama Training School. They have set up a laboratory. Our institute uh, are uh, helping them. And the students, those who are even seventh standard passed out or dropped out from school, they can join this course. They can learn how to repair a particular vehicle and they can start their own garage wherever they are located. So. The kind of skill uh, courses, no doubt, as compared to earlier one, we have increased and also, but still what I can say is a lot of awareness, a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, marketing, a lot of uh, importance and I mean, uh, convincing the parents regarding the career in this area uh, is also possible with respect to our traditional courses. Uh, uh, that this particular uh, uh, skill development will definitely will be, will boost up. Number two, very important point is from government point of view, uh, I can quote one example. For example, if any uh, civil construction work is going on, there are a lot of skills uh, persons are required for a civil construction work, whether it is a dam or construction of a bridge or in Mumbai in our uh, this one city, a lot of constructions are going on. Now, if the company who is recruiting all this skill uh, manpower, they must actually see that the certificates that are being issued to all these students, those who are likely to be a part of this particular uh, organization or join this particular venture, they should be either like they should have a Manson kind of certificate, uh, how to erect a scaffolding. There are so many vocational skill programs that is being launched already skill ministry they have their programs but the thing is in reality uh, when you go to uh, uh, industry or when you go to any uh, organization who is actually uh, recruiting this skill uh, uh, skill students or skill oriented uh, personnel uh, it is it is necessary to match the kind of skill set let us say for example uh, in my uh, institute, if I teach a student how to go for electrician program, that he or she completion course possible for that student to directly go and start doing the electric electrification of a room or a building or a, a commercial place. Now the question is the kind of uh, skill knowledge that the student should have it should be with the industry standard. That is uh, somewhere what I feel is missing. And there we need and help of the industry that industry can come down to institute to educate or to train them as far as the uh, industry oriented uh, skills are required for into the students. So these are my observations 
uh, when uh, actually last 25 years I'm working in the skill education area. So these are uh, very important points need to be addressed and so that we can definitely increase. There are a couple of examples in Maharashtra. They are doing well, but it needs to be scaled up so that it can be rotated to rural areas also because in rural area, there are so many jobs that are available uh, in agriculture also, in automobile sector also, as far as it's not only the digital kind of thing, but it also uh, in other domain, it is there. So thank you. Thank you very much for- uh, I'll come back to you. Actually, episode. you know, very interesting comments and you have raised a very pertinent question, uh, which I would like to, you know, uh, invite Mr. Satyanarayana to uh, answer. When we say, uh, you know, skill, uh, the skill gap analysis, if you do in uh, today's uh, day and age, you find a huge gap between demand and supply. Uh, I mean, looking at the uh, infrastructure sector, you mentioned about it, uh, Umesh ji. Uh, you know, estimates suggest there is a, a, a skill gap of more than 100 million. Automobile industry, uh, it's saying there is a gap of 40 million and similarly for textile, transport, logistics, food processing, uh, retail, organized retail, you know, education, all the services. And given the current pandemic situation, you know, post that, within, during and post that, we are still going through uh, facing the ripple effects. The unemployment has also increased exponentially. So, uh, Satana Ranaji, I want to ask you, the scalability is another issue as there is a poor buy-in from the industry. Umeshji says the industry has to come forward. You know, there is a poor buy-in uh, from the industry given this, uh, uh, the skill uh, gap. How to correct this? Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. It is my privilege to be part of this uh, August gathering. The question is very, very relevant when we interact with the important uh, electronic clusters which are located in Andhra Pradesh, whether it is a Gortaka, Rain Gonta cluster or uh, uh, Sri City, where the when we interact with the industry, with the industry, there is huge demand from the industry side for the, especially uh, those people who have been uh, 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 diploma holders, ITI passed out people. There is a lot of demand, but uh, uh, the gap between the industry requirement and the uh, from the unemployed youth, there is huge gap. That is a very very relevant because. Some of the industries, they are saying that if you provide a people with uh, hands and legs, we are ready to provide them employment. That is the situation in the market, especially at the lower level jobs. So, in fact, uh, skill cascading system of entrepreneurs is being addressed to that uh, aspect by taking into the because we have conducted a number of uh, workshops with these uh, industries, associations, which are dealing with the uh, providing, providing of employment at the lower level. So to address that problem, we have uh, the case state government has decided to establish 175 skill hubs at the uh, for all the assembly consensus in the state. So for that, uh, we have interacted with the industry and basing on the requirement of the industry and basing on the pattern of uh, migration of the people from Andhra Pradesh to uh, say some people they go to Gulf, some people they go to uh, other part Middle East, especially lower ranking jobs. And some people they go to Bangalore, some people they go to uh, Bombay and uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and especially uh, Chennai also they go like from our uh, state of Andhra Pradesh. So what we are doing here is that in skill hubs we have analyzed the uh, job requirement of the industry as well as the uh, the jobs which people are migrating for. So accordingly we are designing the courses for the people who are the school dropouts plus two and maximum plus two and 88 type of kind of kind of people we are providing employment now as a, we have established 66 skill ups out of the 175 consensus they are uh, now we have started very recently uh, basing on the requirement of the industry because soon after the completion of the three months four months training those people will be taken into industry as an employees that is a, that sort of uh, MOs we have entered into the industry. So that is a, the question really relevant is lower level jobs, some technical skills which are very, very essential. So they are being addressed uh, in the state of Andhra Pradesh through skill hubs. We are going to cover around 10,000 people uh, in this uh, year. 
so in addition to skill hubs we are we are having a lot of we are having around 282 engineering colleges those students who have passed out from the say uh, engineering colleges of category two type of uh, towns and cities they are facing a lot of uh, unemployment because their communication skills are poor and they may be technically good but when it comes to communication uh, they have to they have some constraints because of their education pattern and um, I, most of them they studied in the mother tongue up to uh, 12th standard so to redress that one uh, we are going to establish skill colleges in, in all the 25 parliament consensus plus one more consensus 26 places we are going to establish skill colleges where uh, that is depending on the demand of the BTEC graduates which sort of course mechanical and uh, mechatronics or latest uh, robotics this type of courses we are going to offer in those uh, colleges as a part of it now we have entered into MOE with the uh, government of India's organizations like SEMS which is located in uh, Visakhapatnam and there is a MSME unit which is located in uh, uh, that is also Ankapali. That is a, there is a big uh, SCJ called Nachitapuram SCJ, which is uh, next to Brandix, that is a famous uh, uh, apparel park. So already we are uh, we have entered into MOU with them. In uh, in a year, around 240 engineering graduates they will be selected. They will be given employment. They will be given uh, training of six months course. That is a residential course, and uh, all those 240 members are going to be absorbed into the industry. That is the sort of MOU we have entered into it. So the gap between the industry and the uh, unemployed youth to bridge the gap, to provide the livelihoods to the people, this skill colleges, skill up pattern that has been uh, introduced by our uh, government of Andhra Pradesh under the leadership of our chief minister. So we are on that job, sir. So this is what, in addition to this, we are offering Say uh, we are we have entered into 21 uh, multinational companies and uh, famous industrial groups like uh, Hitachi, Snyder, uh, Daikin, Jaguar, Snyder, AWS, etc. These are the groups we have entered. Even IBM, uh, even ISP, Vadwani, and uh, Nandi Foundation for skill part um, communication aspects part they have entered into with the people through LMS platform. We are providing academic uh, output to the students of the engineering colleges and uh, graduate colleges who are passing through second year, third year people. They are being covered. So in addition to this, a uh, major problem in our uh, rural area is infrastructure is a major problem. So for the last three, four years, we have established employability skill centers in 525 colleges where the BA, BCom students will be given trainings and such training basically on courses like uh, uh, banking related activities uh, um, so we are giving the training to those people carry type of courses are being offered to them so those 525 colleges in each college we have kept 30 computers and in addition to that uh, we are having engineering colleges Around in 100 and engineering, 100 engineering college, 104 engineering college we are having. We have provided uh, excellent computer labs uh, to uh, train the engineering graduates while they while they study uh, during their study. So in addition to that, government of on, in the Andhra Pradesh, APSSDC, AP Skill Development Corporation, has entered into MOU with. Uh, like uh, Simmons and uh, Dazalt. So the, we are having Simmons centers because the technology is the order of the day. It's a global village now. It's the technology which is going to unite the world. So as part of it, Simmons, we are having six uh, uh, center of excellences. In addition to six center of excellences, we are having 34 colleges where uh, we are give, uh, training to the, they have established labs, around 30 labs right from computer to rob robotics they have uh, established in all these areas so we have imparted uh, training to around 1.59 uh, lakh students for the last three years so the sound system again uh, that is also then uh, they are going to get the licenses so the sound system they are part of the credit uh, concept credit, credits of the students 
So that's that's where we are going. This is one side. On the other side, we are having collaboration with the industry, uh, and uh, we are having collaboration with the higher education council. We are having higher education council. We call APSI. Uh, in line with the new education policy, uh, we are uh, uh, being we are working for that also. So this is for the academic uh, and non-academic people. In addition to that, uh, job malas especially certain industries, they require uh, jobs. They give us, they ask us that we require this many jobs, especially sectors like pharma, uh, apparel, and uh, uh, refrigerator sector. And they, they, they require a lot of jobs. So industry customized tra skill training program, placement program that is there in another place. So in this year, we have provided, uh, in this uh, financial year, around 14,500 people. These are basically uh, ITA and uh, diploma holders uh, being selected by the companies. They are being given OJT in their campuses and uh, they are getting their jobs. So in addition to that, for uh, non-technical people, job malas, they are being conducted. After that, we will provide them some training and we are having uh, type with our uh, DDGK and PMKB is also we are uh, using the uh, funds given by the government of India to fill the gap. The question which you have asked is really relevant because now our problem is that opportunities shall be utilized by our people. And we, when we use the opportunity only because now is the age of technology, we, we don't have upgradation, skill upgradation. I think uh, future of this youth is very, very bleak. So, this is what uh, uh, from my side. So state side also, state funded uh, schemes say now there is a comprehensive GO uh, government data has been issued in Andhra Pradesh to provide employment by the various uh, corporations like uh, scheduled cash corporation, tribal welfare, uh, BC welfare corporations, and all these uh, youth belong to these various uh, deprived sections. They are, being trained by APSSDC and our uh, curriculum is uh, being updated as per the requirement of the industry. We are uh, aligning the Good courses. Efforts, uh, you know, being made and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so far I do understand that uh, the state is making its optimum efforts, uh, not only for skill development and enhancement, but also speaking with the industry. I'll come back to you with a couple of more questions uh, in my next round. Uh, Thank you. Kindly allow me to move on to uh, invite uh, our uh, next speaker. In fact, you know, when you say uh, education, you also mentioned about it, the education and skill, they go hand in hand. And uh, these are both supported by a wide range of abilities, as well as uh, attitude beyond traditional learning. Uh, the skill enhancement significant, significantly contributes to learning and is an integral part of inclusive growth. Uh, this is particularly true in uh, terms of uh, the work that uh, uh, Mr. Dave is doing at Gujarat Livelihood Promotion uh, Company, wherein uh, you know you've been able to provide uh, in, uh, market linkages, not only the enhancement of uh, or uh, you know in the, in the capacity building and uh, acquisition of new capabilities as well as skills. So, uh, from your perspective, uh, how do we uh, bridge? this skill gap so that more and more women rather than the small number which is what we have are able to uh, skill themselves and are able to uh, reach out to the market anyway let me uh, uh, i think the, the video is switched off she is not uh, on she is online but she is not available perhaps uh, how do we uh, uh, you know the the main question is how do we uh, bridge this skill gap because industry, as everyone says, uh, you know, uh, uh, picks up uh, uh, the people who are ready to be absorbed in the industry, but they still find uh, there is a skill gap. So how do we uh, fix this? If uh, I may uh, ask Umesh ji. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, for this, uh, VET program, uh, like vocational education training program, now, Train the trainer program need to be initiated first in order to uh, educate all these uh, uh, trainers uh, in terms of giving the skill-based training uh, to the students. Now, uh, 
if you look at a model <clears throat> which is available in Australia or in Europe country like a TAFE school, those who are actually providing uh, VET, that is vocational education training, uh, when you when I have clearly observed and studied their training program, how they go, they have a, a, a very standard methodology in order to provide the training to the students in terms of uh, identifying their uh, original uh, first prerequisite, the student, those who join this program, and then they will uh, offer this particular training program in terms of the student, he should uh, actually enjoy his learning and uh, 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 grab these skills uh, during this particular education program. Now they have there are a lot of checklists in between wherein they uh, evaluate the student. They have their own rubrics designed in a such a way that uh, they will give the guarantee that after completion of this particular module, it is something called outcome-based skill training program. Right. Like if they give this particular training uh, of let us say 10 hours or five hours, the, the student will be able to do this, do this. So they really in real sense say that if they say the student will be able to do this, means they should, should be able to do this. Now the passed out of this particular training program and they, they will be an industry uh, ready kind of uh, uh, personnel. Like, so they have designed their curriculum, their content, their rubrics, their evaluation pattern, their skills, uh, working hours, the, the assignments, their quizzes, questions, and also involvement of industry in designing all these aspects. So that way they bridge the gap between the industry and the skill that uh, you are actually providing in, uh, in terms of education to the students. So that model I find is very uh, beautiful model because what happened uh, in, in their country uh, uh, when I have undergone this kind of uh, training uh, through CAFE, the Australian team have trained me also uh, then how to offer this training program. What they say that unless and until a student is not able to complete these many hours of their training program will not certify him and unless and until student will not get certification he will not be a like uh, get a license as an electrician license as a when, any kind of uh, skill and once the student get a license from government then he or she will be able to join an industry in two senses. so that model exists in their country uh, here uh, even if we give the certificate the certificate should have a lot of standard as in terms of evaluation is concerned. The, uh, it should not be like that if the student goes who joined this particular skill training program and after one year he, he, he or she will get the certificate as it is. So that way if you focus on uh, uh, this particular uh, delivery of this particular skill program, they will say that okay this particular student has a potential to work with me and the certification has a value that way we can bridge the gap this is what is my observation very well put in fact you know that takes me to the next question to mr satyanarayana uh, when we say that you know already uh, industry is looking for the industry ready workforce and uh, we are working to enhance their skills for the suitability and uh, 21 NNCs and 282 engineering colleges and all that work that you have done. Uh, one problem which has emerged as a result of pandemic is that it has hit the employment and unemployment has been on the rise like never before. Uh, youth is disgruntled. So motivation as it is happens to be an issue. Uh, you know, with large scale unemployment coming up, uh, how do we, how do we uh, further uh, manage this uh, crisis of unemployment and bring in more skills should not be the case that we have got a huge amount of skilled workforce, but there are no takers. Mr. Satyanarayana. I think Umesh Ji probably yeah, ask you. What you have asked is really okay. where is there. Uh, that uh, retention versus uh, attrition uh, in the trainings of basically say that PMKV. Uh, DDJK trainings, if you see it, those youth who are getting the trainings, uh, they when they get the employment, their aspirations versus uh, uh, immediate employment is a question. 
say for example a villager a unemployed youth he may join the course as an electrician training course in due course of time after joining the course he may complete the electrician course but uh, he may work in some factory some uh, village or somewhere he work but after that his ambition will get changed and uh, he will leave that job and he will opt for some other job so that uh, retention versus versus uh, attrition is a major issue but uh, only one thing is that no human resource i firmly believe that if it is stayed that will not be based in some other form that will be based apparently when you see that uh, he may not uh, he may discontinue the job which he was uh, trained but uh, he may continue the uh, he may uh, add some other say he may learn some other techniques he may learn some other uh, uh, skills and the skill upgradation is a continuous process so when the skill get the upgraded he may get employment in some other form so that is a really uh, that gap is there uh, retention versus attrition mm -hmm. is a major yeah, issue he, and he, uh, we try to do one job and may get another one only if you know there is another job for him so that's that's a catch 22 situation i understand where you're coming from and uh, that you know retention and attrition both uh, have been affecting the job market and uh, Umeshi, uh, you would like to address this uh, question. Yeah, yeah. The point is, uh, <clears throat> if you look at an unemployment figure, uh, in an un 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 unemployment figure, there are so many uh, hybrid students or hybrid uh, people, they have been counted there. The person who becomes an unemployed, if he or she does not have a proper skill to earn a money or to join any factory or industry, Definitely every student from my belief is everyone has inherent skill in them uh, uh, to, to earn money into this uh, world. But the point is like he or she has to give some direction in order to get absorbed into a particular domain wherever he or she interested in. Now the point is <clears throat> unemployment figure if the hybrid numbers are there uh, at a proper time, a proper guidance for a particular student is very essential. Like, uh, let us say, uh, sometimes when I say uh, uh, a state like Goa, and if you start a course in a computer engineering there, rather than starting a course in travel and tourism in Goa, we have started some computer engineering course in Goa. Naturally, the passed out of that particular course may not have an employment within Goa. He has to migrate from Goa. But if he could have completed to travel and tourism over there itself or hotel management, catering technology, he could have started his own startup in the Goa itself. So mm -hmm. what I need to say is that study is very important. Uh, it is to be done in region-wise, wherever locally that particular job or some kind of skills are required, that kind of training need to be provided in that area so that the local youth will get attracted to that and get, they can be trained accordingly to get absorbed into the industry. That way, the unemployment can be reduced. Because otherwise, what happens uh, in a remote place, if you start a course wherein there, is, there are no takers in that area, they have to migrate. Now, once they get migrated to new area wherein they cannot adapt or get themselves adjusted to that new area or new domain, uh, so uh, there is a problem. So that number keeps on increasing. And the point is, uh, there, there is a lot of myth that if you study computers or information technology or AI, or uh, machine learning, whatever today's course, you, are, you will get readily job. Like uh, the, what you call it as, uh, the absorption will be very high into the industry. So it's, they have to see that whether his, own, his or her own skill or his or her own capability in order to handle the question, this one, um, problems in this domain, they need to do this or not, that is no, nowhere being checked. So that is a problem. The unemployment is increasing. No, I understand <clears> because <throat> you know uh, you very well uh, pointed out uh, pointed this out that in case there are uh, locally uh, the kind of jobs available and there is a, a skill gap, uh, the focus should be on uh, providing those skills which can immediately be absorbed, rather sure. than uh, training the youth on JCB in an area where is there, there is no construction expected to happen over next ten years. You know, uh, and uh, the youth will be uh, disgruntled and they will be migrating. 
And uh, there are two problems that happen along with A, that it leads to migration. And wherever the youth goes, uh, he's not paid that handsome that he can support his day to day living uh, while working also. So uh, he will immediately slip into a job which is probably more lucrative, but not as per his skill or otherwise his uh, desire. So uh, yeah. you, are, you are skilling people and pushing them into a vocation which they do not want to do. So over a period of time, it's it's not a win-win. It's a lose-lose situation. You know, they don't earn for the skill that they have and you lose the skill for which, you know, you train them. So it has to be uh, pretty much pretty much oriented. So uh, one more point, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, one more point, like uh, uh, we all are living in some metro cities. Uh, it's very difficult to find a right plumber to get our uh, tab repaired, right? Absolutely. Plumber is a dis distinguished uh, like uh, community wherein, or to get a good uh, electrician also. So uh, a person who is a good plumber will will not be unemployed, unemployed, right? That is what I say. A person having a skill which is not, uh, I mean, in demand in that area where he lives, then it's not no use. So unemployment figure will increase. So it has to be a balanced kind of thing in the region wise, like wherever that skill is required, that kind of training needs to be provided at his destination. So if you focus on a particular village and that village or that area has a specialty in textile industry, then you should have a skill in textile industry. A particular area where there is something called, they may be taking some uh, forest uh, outcome and uh, selling into the market. So accordingly, the forest product can be uh, they, they will be trained in that area, like leather also, leather industry, uh, something like that. So that is that need to be focused and that study has to be done. No, in fact, you know, process. GLPC is working exactly on these lines, you know, whatever skills they have locally, they are only uh, enhancing those skills and providing them uh, the forward uh, linkages with the market. Because that's the only way to go to uh, increase uh, livelihoods. I mean, uh, the people in the tribal areas and the rural belts, you can't teach them uh, plumbing or otherwise become an electrician. You only will sure. have to promote the local handicraft and the Correct. skills that they have uh, or whichever sort. So that, you know, uh, not only they are uh, gainfully uh, busy, employed, they may also employ a few more people if the, uh, you know, enterprise grows into a group of women coming together or group of uh, young men coming together. So there are n number of opportunities. So startups can happen out of that. Sure. Then uh, the great amount of movement actually can start. The lady yeah. is not here, you know, otherwise I uh, really would have loved uh, her to uh, reflect on uh, some of uh, these things with, where there could be a possible uh, learning for uh, the others as well. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank, uh, you. Been, thank, been, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great input. Uh, so, Umesh ji, thank you so much, Mr. Satyanarayana, for being with thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.